<sighs> so, the graphics card market's got you down. You're probably not alone in that. Uh, I think it's got a lot of people down lately. You know, uh, a few months ago we saw some of the prices for new graphics cards start to come down just a little bit, but um, really nothing after that has seemed to have made any kind of impact. Intel at this point is scheduled at the time of filming to start releasing their graphics cards to the market before too long, relatively before too long, and uh, you know, that that may turn out to be a really good thing for a lot of gamers, we'll see. Uh, have an, another contender on the market who can potentially be making their own GPUs in-house. Uh, I don't remember whether they're using an external fab for those GPUs or not right now, but you know, in the future they could switch to their own in-house stuff uh, and potentially disrupt the market pretty, pretty drastically that way, but um, th that is all to be seen at this point, and for the people who are looking for an upgrade right now, I may have an option for you if you are one of the kinds of people who in the lowest of the low parts of the, the craze for everything, or even still ongoing right now if you've managed to find them, um, have gotten hold of a really low-end card, something like a GT710, 610, uh, or a, you know, even a 730, or a, uh, also on the AMD front, you know, um, in, in my case, uh, a, something like an R5 240 or an R7 250, those, those older cards that are just barely scraping the bottom of the barrel to be able to play games, um, if you are upset with the performance with one of those after you have bought it, um, and you are still at this point interested in not waiting and getting something anything that's brand new on the market right now uh, that is available, then yeah, I, I think I've managed to find an option for you. So this is an R5 240. Uh, this is not the card that I'm suggesting, obviously. I think I uh, touched on this earlier. This is a Dell OEM only card. Um, and I happen to have two of these. Um, that I got with the cluster of uh, oh, Dell Optiplex 3020s that I got for my Proxmox cluster, which I did a video or two ago. Um, now, this, one of these, is powering my current HTPC, which is running Linux. And uh, it's just not really cutting it for me, so the upgrade that I found the one that I'm recommending, potentially, to some people, we're gonna take a look at it, is to buy uh, one of NVIDIA's workstation cards, one of the low-end ones that is still on the market right now. It's not a fantastic uh, price-to-performance ratio, especially relative to pre-shortage, but right now, um, this is a card that you can actually buy from a reputable um, vendor at a somewhat reasonable cost. It's it's pretty close, I guess, to something like the GT1030 at a similar price to what that would have launched at. Um, so yeah, the, the card that I am looking at is the NVIDIA T400. That's in the Quadro RTX line, technically, uh, but it does not support RTX. It is the, the really low-end uh, Quadro RTX series card, um, and it is technically, at the time of filming, available um, for not too much over $100, I would say, um, and I am going to swap out my uh, GPU in my home theater PC, and we are going to take a look at how well this performs and see whether it's really a worthwhile upgrade or not for some people. Um, this is Mountain Computers, and uh, let's let's get into the video here after the intro. All right, so here is the box that this graphics card came shipped in. Um, you can see it's 
It's very nondescript. In fact, on three of the sides here, it has no information whatsoever about what this is. Here is a barcode, and then on the ends, it just says PNY, who is the manufacturer of the card. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and open this up, I guess. And then uh, once we have a look at what's inside, we can transfer this into my home theater PC where we can try it out. Take the plastic wrapping off there and uh, let's see, how does this open? Ah, okay, it just opens on the end. Okay, so, here we go. Um, pulling that out there. Oh, uh, lots of accessories falling out there underneath. So, it looks like it comes pre-installed with a small form factor back bracket, but it does come with a full one. My home theater PC is small form factor though, so um, won't be needing this. Uh, also, you get it's got three mini display ports on it, and it looks like they provide one adapter for each port in the box, which is good, because there definitely aren't that many displays out there uh, that are supporting a mini display port natively. And then some documentation from NVIDIA, so uh, Turing GPU support guide, lovely, and Turing GPU quick start guide. Uh, a pretty decent idea that we can just ignore this and uh, so yeah let's let's get the GPU out of this little case here and then I can show it off Here is the current iteration of my home theater PC, and uh, let's just go ahead and start opening it up here. Some of you who have been watching the channel for a while might laugh uh, if you can see what's inside. Probably not that easy, but um, what is in there is definitely um, me reusing once again uh, on one of these Dell Precision T1500 motherboards that I seem to keep reusing in different projects over and over again. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take out the graphics card that's in there, if I can remember how this PCI um, card holder works. Looks like I've pretty much got it already though, so... Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and pull this card out, which is going to require me to use a screwdriver back here to push the latch. Hopefully I can get it there. Yep. And then... So this is what I had in there already. The Radeon R5 240, um, which is a Dell... OEM only card as far as everything that I've been able to see on it, but um, it, it is impressive for being able to run modern graphics drivers. It is the first generation of cards that can run uh, the AMD GPU driver on Linux instead of requiring you to use the Radeon driver, uh, which any older cards would have done, but Obviously, being as old as it is, and certainly not a very high-end GPU anyways, uh, this has become very slow, so let's replace this with the new card. <laughs>
All right, so let me finish getting this thing put back together, guys, and I'll be back with you in just a minute to check out how well this performs. But before we look at how the new card performs, let's first take a look at how the old GPU was performing just to get a kind of baseline reading for how well this improvement might work out for those of you who have similarly spec'd cards. So what I'm running here is uh, Unigen Heaven, uh, the benchmark done uh, by the Unigen engine people. It's a little bit older now. I'm running it at 1080p with tessellation off just to give the card sort of a fighting chance. Not really because 1080p is still pretty rough for these cards. Um, but I was surprised to find that this benchmark works uh, and works just fine on Linux. Um, really easy to, to set up. But anyways, so the R5 240 wound up uh, really chugging in this test, if you can't tell by the footage. Um, I This is captured footage and was not used to run the benchmark, but um, when I did run the benchmark on its own without doing any kind of capture, what I wound up with was a score of 151, uh, an average FPS of 6, a minimum FPS of 3.9, and a max FPS of 11.9. But before we move on to look at the other benchmark and the other card, too, uh, I want to talk just briefly about the CPU that's in the system. So this is a first-gen Intel Core i-series i3 530. It's a very old CPU at this point. It's dual-core hyper-threaded, and uh, we may see that come back to bite us here uh, in just a little bit. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the, the next benchmark. So benchmark is kind of a strong word for what this is, but this is just me running Fallout New Vegas in Proton. It's a little tough to tell, maybe, because the clip is so short, but it was kind of stuttery with, with the R5 240. All right, moving on to the main attraction. You guys are really gonna have to take my word for this, but uh, there is a lot of weird tearing in the footage on this, which was absolutely not visible in person. It was an artifact of the recording that I was doing, apparently. So uh, this is going to look absolutely terrible, and I am going to have to try to make the case to you guys that this is actually much better, which it is. It, it absolutely uh, in person is. So. Um, the score on this one came out to a much, much improved 686. Not a score that's going to break any records, obviously, but it's a lot better than those those really, really low-end GPUs. Um, the, the average FPS was at a 27.2, so for those who are comfortable gaming it, 30 FPS, yeah, the majority of games that you could try and run are going to accomplish that, I think. Um, the minimum uh, FPS was 6.8, and uh, the maximum went all the way up to 60.6. So, um, like I said earlier, I think that the CPU is kind of becoming a limiting factor in here, seeing just how uh, wide the gap is between the minimum frame count and the the maximum there so uh let's let's move on to how fallout new vegas wound up running okay so uh this did still have some stutters which aren't present in the film here but the performance is drastically improved so let's see if we can draw some conclusions here the t400 is obviously markedly better than the r5240 now the R5-240 was never going to be contending for best GPU, I don't think, even when it came out. But you can definitely see the potential for quite a bit of improvement out of upgrading with a GPU like this. And we can also see some signs like the really, really occasional stutters that are happening in Fallout New Vegas that seem to indicate that at this point, this system is very much CPU bound, not uh, GPU bound. That also carries over into some more testing that I did where I saw that with harder games, the majority of the time, my CPU was getting maxed out on one thread 
and my GPU was, for the most part, not getting stressed out that much. It was sitting at 30 to 40 percent utilization. So if you have an older system, this could definitely be a worthwhile upgrade, I think. I'm now going to hand it back off to my talking head self in a clip that I filmed earlier to close out the video here. <laughs> okay, so given those results, you can see that we're definitely getting a significant increase in performance. Uh, and because of that, if you have one of these really low-end cards and you just, you for whatever reason, really need the extra performance, you know, um, this is probably going to be enough horsepower to be able to drive 1080p games at uh, medium to low quality potentially, you know, depending on the game. Anything older is certainly going to be easily playable with them. I mean, uh, the Fallout New Vegas uh, test that I did uh, rendered some really nice results, uh, even when using a Proton to uh, emulate the DirectX layer uh, into Linux. So that that's really promising. If you want to run Windows on it, you might get s even slightly better performance than that, uh, which is definitely, you know, a good thing. And if you're looking to target 720p gaming, then I would say that this is this is definitely a good card to pick up. You know, if you have a, a GTX 750 Ti and you're looking for something to help you max out those 720p newer games, this probably is a card that can manage to help you with that too. So um, if you guys want me to do any more testing with this card, let me know. Um, and I will potentially take a look at you know, putting some more benchmarks up or something if anyone has something that they're interested in me doing. Probably not going to load Windows onto that PC. I uh, just am only running Linux on it for right now um, as a part of a Linux experiment that I'm doing for uh, converting to desktop Linux around uh, all the computers that I'm working on. I don't know how it's going yet. It's going okay with a couple specific shortbacks that I kind of need to address, so uh, that is potentially for another video if I decide to make it, but um, you know, the, the Linus Tech Tips channel is doing a similar experiment right now with somewhat more mixed results I've seen based on what I've seen so far, but um, that, that said, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to make a video or not on it, but uh, that, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've been enjoying content on the channel, um, then consider subscribing. Uh, if you haven't checked out any of my other videos, then uh, go ahead and, you know, um, check some out. Uh, there's some decent videos, just don't go back too far. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.